Okay, so here's question three on the uh, January 2009 D1 paper. And this is a critical path analysis type question. And it's basically getting us to draw an activity network from a precedence table. Um, and then we're going to talk about the dummies. So we were expecting to, um, to use exactly two dummies. So we'll watch out for that and see where they come up. So let's go ahead and have a look. Now here's the question, and we're going to draw a network from it. So let's start off with node 1, and we label it like so. Now I think, uh, talking particularly to my classes, um, I think I, using the my maths, they tell you to label it node 0. In fact, on the mark scheme, they start with uh, node 1. So in your critical path analysis, always start with node 1. Okay. And then from here we can say, well, what can we start straight away? Well, it's got to be A, B, and C. So let's uh, just put on some arcs here, A, B, and C. So these things can start straight away. Then activity D depends on activity B being done. So then we label node 2. We don't label the nodes until we need to bring something off them. But now we do, we need to bring D off B. So let's put in D here. D is coming off B. So look down, E needs to come off, uh, it depends on B and C. So E depends on both of these being done. Okay, it might be tempting to loop C up here so that we can take an E off here, but actually that's not going to work because then D is no longer dependent just on B. So we're going to have to use a dummy here. So let's label this number 3 and bring a dummy arc down here. And then we can bring E off here. Let's see, does that work? Um, e now depends on B and C. That works. And does uh, B still D, excuse me, D still depend on B, or D still depends on B, and because of the direction of the arrow, D doesn't depend on C, it just depends on B, so this still works here, and that's the use of the dummy there, so that's good to, uh, to be able to do that and get confident with that one. So let's carry on, we've got um, activity... Uh, what have we got? E, let's go for F. Has to depend also on B and C. So we could bring F out from here. F depends on B and C. E also depends on B and C. So far so good. G has to depend on F. Well, no reason why we can't just do this, is there? Bring G out from there. G depends on F. Works okay. And H also depends on F. So, um, we can bring H out here, H depends on F, that works so far as well. I depends on G and H, ah, now what would be tempting here would be to go, well, okay, number 5, I depends on G and H, now we've got I depending on G and H, that would not actually be correct. Um, and hopefully you remember that the reason that's not correct is because there's a convention that states we can't have um, two nodes like this connected uh, by only two arcs going from the same node to the same node. Um, we're just not allowed to do that, so we have to use a dummy. So let's get rid of this bit. Let's see if you can remember. Um, how to use the dummy in this situation. I don't want to have a think about it um, before I show you. Okay, here's how we do it. We have two nodes and we have the dummy going from one to the other. So that's supposed to be a dotted line. Okay, and we label them in whatever way we, we choose to, 5, 6 or 6 and 5, that doesn't matter. 
and then we can say um, I depends on G and H. We can bring I off here. Okay, and I now depends on G and H, but um, we don't have this problem, which we're not allowed to do. So finally, we say J depends on I. Well, that's easy enough. Over at number seven, and J comes off there. Now the last thing to do in this question is to sync everything down to the final node that we call the sync node. So we'll put node number eight here, the last node, and everything, um, every arc that's not already joined to something, to a node, will sync down to number eight. Don't forget to put the directions on all of them. Um, so yeah, that's that's your final um, final picture you should you should end up with for uh, that question. Now let's look at part B. Here we have to unfortunately use uh, a bit of a bit of English to actually explain um, why these dummies are necessary. So it's worth being kind of um, worth being confident about why you have to use the dummies in the first place. Now let's have a look at the first one. Um, what, what we can say here is that the reason we need to use a dummy is because E depends on B and C, whilst D only depends on B. That's sufficient explanation. So we could write, oh, no color, one sec. Uh, let's try that. Ah, great. E depends on B and C whilst D depends only on B. Now that's a a reasonable way to say to explain why we need that dummy there. How about the second one? Um, remember it was a convention that we can't have H and G starting and finishing at the same node. So I'm just going to say that uh, by convention H and G cannot start and finish at the same node. So we need to introduce a new node for G to go to. And this is a very reasonable way to express that fact. So that's one mark each for those two sentences. Or you can say it in your own words. But make sure you get across the, the general idea there. Okay, so that concludes um, question three.